I contend that the left, as a general rule, is getting more brazen when it comes to the issue of abortion. And this is just another example of it. I mean, we could go back over the past several months and look at the governor of Virginia, Northam. We just talked about that, him calling for actual infanticide after the baby is born, that there's supposed to be a conversation that takes place as to whether or not they keep the baby. We see the uh, new pro-abortion bills that have been popping up in several states. We saw the Empire State Building lit up pink, celebrating this new abortion bill that allows abortion all the way up into the time of birth. I mean, just all of these insanely radical things on the abortion front that the Democrat, the Democrat Party as a whole is trying to move further left on the issue of abortion. And they're getting more brazen and more vile about it. And this next guy, Brian Sims, I believe that's his name, Brian Sims of Pennsylvania, a representative in the House there. This is not some random activist. This is a guy that actually holds political office in the state of Pennsylvania. And we see him just harassing and going after a woman that is protesting in front of a Planned Parenthood. She's by herself. And he's, uh, well, I, I tell you what, rather than me describing it, just watch. Hi, everyone. Uh, Representative Brian Sims here. And I'm once again out in front of Planned Parenthood of Southeastern Pennsylvania. Today's protester. Now, she is an old white lady who's going to try to avoid showing you her face. Um, but the same laws, and luckily, that protect her from being out here also protect me from showing you who she is. And so my hope is, is that you'll donate $100 for every extra hour that this woman is out here telling people what's right for their bodies. So I have a couple questions for you, ma'am. How, how many children have you clothed today? I'm sorry, I missed your answer. How many children have you clothed today? How about how many children have you put shoes on their feet today? Have you fed any children today or have you just stood out in front of a Planned Parenthood shaming people for something that they have a constitutional right to do? Huh? huh? If you hear about the children, you can pray at home for children. It's probably the same place that you could feed a child, but you're not. Instead, you're out here shaming people for something that they have a constitutional right to do. Who would have thought that an old white lady would be out in front of a Planned Parenthood telling people what's right for their bodies? Shame on you. Shame on you for hiding your face at the same time that you're shaming other people. Again, the same laws that protect me, protect you, and, and that's okay. You're allowed to be out here. That doesn't mean that you have a moral right to be out here. Shame on you. What you're doing here is disgusting. This is wrong. You have no business being out here. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Yep. Disgusting. So do me a favor, please. If you're watching this, Planned Parenthood of Southeastern Pennsylvania is one of the most heavily protested Planned Parenthoods in the country, and they deserve your support. This, these are the kind of attacks that we can expect on Planned Parenthoods in the current administration. Shame on you, ma'am, for standing out here thinking you know what's right for other people's bodies. Shame on you. What you're doing here is disgusting. It's an attack on, on common sense. It's an attack on the Constitution. It's an attack on the rights of every single person coming here. And don't convince yourself that what you're doing isn't extremely racist. How dare you? This is grotesque. Actually, you're doing the right thing. Let's keep walking down the block. We can talk about this. We can talk about your Christian faith, about how your Christian faith believes in shaming people, about how your Christian faith believes in telling people that you know what's right for their bodies, about how your Christian faith tells you that you know what's right for their families. Shame on you. Shame on you. Camera out of my Sh face. No, no. The same rights that allow you to be out here allow me to be out here. Shame on you. You have a problem protesting in public? Don't no. protest in public. Don't if you know who this woman is, face. and if you can give me her address, we'll protest out in front of her home. Let's go protest out in front of her house and tell her what's right for her body. All right. Now, you notice that there were quite a few, and I, I made them evident because you can watch the whole video. You notice there were quite a few edits that I had to do for time. That's because this goes on for eight minutes. And remember, he's the one doing the taping. It's not like somebody caught him on camera. He's the one holding the camera, proud of what he's doing, as he's accosting an old lady and trying to berate her and browbeat her, essentially. And he's standing out there. The reason that I had to make so many cuts is because... It's an eight minute long thing and this continues to go on. You can watch the whole thing online. It won't be hard to find at all, I'm sure. But one thing I wanted to bring up a few things. First of all, this idea of he says it's wrong for you to shame people and your faith teaches you to shame people. And then he says shame on you. Well, if shaming people is wrong, aren't you trying to shame her? 
So your problem isn't with the shame itself. The problem is you and she have a disagreement over what is shameful. See, I think that belittling somebody and berating them in public, I think that's shameful. I think that standing out trying to inform people that they don't have to commit this heinous act against God, I think that's not shameful at all. And so let's have that discussion as opposed to you just yelling and berating her. And you'll notice that the woman doesn't even fight back, which we'll get to in a second. One claim that I think is very ironic is he's referring to her as extremely racist. He says, make no mistake that what you're doing is extremely racist. There's a couple of problems with that. First of all, Planned Parenthood itself, the organization that he is defending and trying to get people to donate to, was founded by somebody that was a Klan sympathizer who went and spoke at Klan rallies and somebody that believed it was their mission and said that the mission of Planned Parenthood was to wipe people, wipe black people off the face of the earth, referred to them and Jews and other minority races as human weeds. And that's the organization that you're defending and that you're trying to raise money for. Do you see the healthy dose of irony in that? And another thing that I wanted to bring up too, if you're looking at proportionately how Planned Parenthood and abortion as a whole affects people, it affects the black community far more than it does the white community. In fact, if you're looking at it demographically, black people make up roughly 13 to 14% of the population. They make up about 30 to 35% of all abortions. In fact, in New York City, if you were a black child, you were more likely to be aborted than you were to be born. That's how high the numbers are when it comes to black people when abortions. And I, I want to ask this question, and people have accused me of this again. It's because this is clearly a person that has a hard time thinking for himself because all he knows how to do is throw out a bunch of buzzwords. He does not really act, he's not actually rationing out his arguments themselves. He's just throwing out a bunch of buzzwords, and even though there's no aspect of this that seems racist on the surface, he's accusing her of somehow being a racist. And when he does that, let's also remember that under this woman, presumptively, under her worldview where abortion was not legal, black people would be a far larger portion of the population than they are now. That's one of the things that I've actually brought up before. If we're looking at Caleb Cockwood's worldview, and, and we had abortion outlawed and had since Roe v. Wade, there would be approximately 20 million more black people in America. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I would love that to be the case. Nobody deserves to be destroyed in the womb, the place that, where they should be the safest. And so this guy referring to her as racist while he is defending an organization that has killed 20 million black children, that to me is absurd. Under my worldview and under the worldview of the pro-life movement, if you were to enact the policies that we're suggesting, there would be 20 million more black children alive today in the United States of America. Think about that for a second. And another thing that I found very ironic about that is he refers to her as a racist, and yet you'll notice several times in that video, and even more if you're looking at it from the, the, the unedited version, he refers to her as an old white woman. And he just says it with such disdain, an old white woman. That's the definition of an ad hominem attack. He's attacking her based on her age and based on her race. And usually when it comes to racial relations, the best way to determine whether or not something is racist is flip the race and see if it would be if it would be acceptable in the other way. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, that this lady happened to be black. Would it be okay for this guy to go out and say, look at this old black woman coming out telling people what they ought to do with her body. Shame on you. You're disgusting. Are you really going to sit there and tell me that you would be okay with that? That the people on the left would look at this guy and go, oh yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. No. This guy specifically is attacking this woman based on her race and based on her age, saying that because she's old and because she's white, well, her opinion doesn't matter. 
that's because of this weird intersectionality Olympics that we're involved in now, to where your opinion only matters if you can stack up a bunch of labels on top of yourself. That's saying, well, because she's white, she can't possibly be right on this. Because she's white, she can't possibly understand the intricacies of this. Because she's white, she's not smart enough to really understand this issue. That's a degrading and racist. And so ironically, while he is trying to claim that she's a racist, he's the one that's actually calling out her race and trying to make that an issue in this discussion. It's just, it's so morally reprehensible what he's doing. And what's crazy about this is, I don't know this lady, I don't know, I don't know much about her faith or anything because she doesn't really speak much in this video. You saw the only part that I actually remember her speaking in. But do you notice that she doesn't fight back? That she kind of just sits there and quietly walks around and, and is praying to herself. She doesn't fight back. The only point that she gets agitated is when he tries to stick the camera right there in her face. And you can see how close the camera is, how close he got to her, trying to stick the camera right in her face. Which, by the way, is textbook harassment. But nonetheless, when that happens, she does get a little testy. But nonetheless, when that does occur, every other time, she still is not fighting back. She's still not trying to engage him. First of all, I think that that's because she realizes that this is not somebody that is interesting in actually hearing her views. I think that she understands that her role there is to talk to these young women that are going through a very difficult time, that are, you know, not understandably or justifying what they're doing or the choices that they're making, but they are in a difficult situation or they wouldn't be going there in the first place. See, I think that she understands that her purpose there is to help them not to argue with him or make a political statement. I think that, that she really understands that that's her role. This guy clearly is only there for the politics. He is only there to make a political statement. Because you heard him right there, he's trying to raise money for a political group that agrees with him. Probably one that gives to his campaign, I would imagine. I don't know that for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me if Planned Parenthood, who donates a lot of money to politicians, would be donating to somebody like him. And so this is somebody that is essentially raising money for Planned Parenthood and possibly sort of in a, back, uh, a roundabout way raising money for himself while he's there, making a political statement. She's not doing that. She's more worried about the people that are coming in. She's not there to have a political debate with the guy. And yet he continues to go after and go after. Her. Even if you have a relative, for example, that you politically disagree with. For example, obviously I'm pro-life. Obviously I'm pro-life. But let's reverse it. Let's say that there was a, one of the women's health clinics that don't give people abortion. And by the way, I do actually have a, several relatives that are pro-choice. Let's say that one of my pro-choice relatives were out there protesting and a Republican lawmaker showed up and did this exact same thing, but in reverse to this person. That would be a despicable display for anybody. Can you imagine if one of your female relatives had to endure this and went through, it, through this and saw the rudeness and the vitriol that this guy had for this woman? And another thing too, in a different video, in a different venue, he also offered $100 for the addresses of these three teenage girls uh, that were also protesting in front of this Planned Parenthood. And the reason that he did is because he wanted, and this is his words, not mine, you just heard him say the same thing about this old woman that was in the video. The reason that he wanted that is because he wanted their home addresses so he could show up at their houses and protest them there and harass them there to scare them and to scare their families. So this guy, who is claiming to be a feminist, claiming to be a champion for women, is there harassing young teenage girls and old ladies and doing so specifically trying to intimidate them into silence, trying to keep them from speaking out. Is there anything less manly or anything less feminist than trying to shut women up because they disagree with you? I think that's pretty much one of the first things when you're looking in the sexist handbook of things that men do that are not, you know, not feminist or don't care about what a woman says, they try to scare or intimidate them into not speaking. And yet this guy claims that he's a champion for women. 
it really does not make any sense. And, and does this guy really think that he's big and tough because he's shouting down elderly ladies and teenage girls and threatening to have people show up at their house to harass them? I can't think of anything less manly than that. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.